Well, if you've been following along in this series of YouTube videos that I've been doing on your Ansible lab inside of AWS, you'll know that we are at a point where we have an Ansible control node that is running the Linux uh, AWS image. And then we have a host that we are going to begin controlling via Ansible, and that is an Ubuntu system. So I've made connections to these two systems now, and we are ready to go to our next step. And that is going to be to configure the Ansible control node and the host so that the control node can reach the host node using SSH. Remember, SSH is that communications protocol that is uh, going to be relied on by Ansible in order to reach into those devices and control them, to configure them. So let's go ahead and get our console sessions fired up here to those devices. Here you can see I am sitting at the control node. And on the control node, what we're going to do is an SSH keygen because we are going to generate the new public and private RSA key pair that we are going to use for this access to that remote host. So notice it says it's going to save the key in my home directory under the .ssh directory, and it's going to be the ID RSA. So that's all great. I hit enter. I will not do a passphrase on this. We're not really too concerned about security here in our lab environment, so I won't go through anything extra as far as security goes. And the public key is located here, you notice. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that path, and then I'll just come down here and change directories to that path. If I do an LS, there is the ID RSA public key. So what I'm going to do now is sudo vim and i'll do the id underscore rsa dot pub so we are now looking at that key information and what i'm going to do is simply highlight that and we are going to make sure we copy that to the keyboard uh, to the clipboard rather so there we go we've got our public key copied and now I'll just escape on the Vim and then I'll do my colon quit. We didn't make any changes there that we need to save. We just copied the key. And then I'm going to go over to my node that I plan on managing. And let's go into the SSH, the hidden directory there. So we're going to cd.ssh. This is in your home directory. And if we list what's inside there, we see the authorized keys file. So I'm going to do a sudo vim on that authorized keys. And we are going to get inside here and we're going to paste that key that we want to use for access. So I'll do a question mark, uh, excuse me, dollar sign to get to the end there. I will hit I to get into insert mode in vim. I will go to that extra line right there. We'll do a control V in order to paste. And as you can see, we've pasted in that new keying information. Perfect. So now I need to hit escape and I need to do my colon right and quit. And we have updated the authorized keys file with the appropriate key. So now we are ready to test this and to test this, we're going to go ahead and change directories into our Ansible location. So I'm going to do a CD forward slash Etsy forward slash Ansible. And we're going to sudo vim and we're going to go into the host file. Note this is the default host file for Ansible. And the host file is our inventory where we can indicate the systems that we want to control. And I'm going to say that whoa, we obviously need to be in edit mode here. So let me hit the I and I'm going to do Ubuntu at and it is 10.0.1.79, the IP address of the device that we're going to be controlling out there. And I'll do escape. 
and I'll do my write and quit. And there we go. So we have an updated host file with the username and IP address of that remote device that we want to control. So there are many ways to go about doing what I just did to making sure that the control node can use SSH to access the remote node that you're controlling. But as you saw, I kind of did it the manual copy method and that works great as we're about to see. So it's time to see Ansible in action. Uh, in an earlier video, we did a test against our local host. In fact, it wouldn't be bad to try that again. So we're going to automate the pinging of our local host system. You can see that worked. That's a really good clue that Ansible is functioning beautifully. So now I'll do an Ansible and I'll say, let's do it against all of the hosts in the inventory. And we know that's just going to be our one node out there that we want to control. But still, <laughs> it's a nice... Uh, way to display how you can quickly run a set of modules against all of the inventory. So I'll say Ansible all dash M ping. And oh, look at this. We reach out and we are going to indicate, yes, we are sure that we want to connect to this host. And look at that. We can see that we just successfully ran Ansible against that remote machine connecting via SSH, and we were successful running the ping module. If you up arrow and then run it again, of course, there'll be no uh, indication that we need to trust that system. So it runs even cleaner on that second execution. So we are now in a great spot where we can begin using Ansible to control that remote node inside of our AWS Ansible Practice Lab. Thanks so much for viewing, and I'm sure you're excited for the next edition of utilizing uh, AWS in order to build a fully functional and robust practice lab.